In this video, we'll be looking at configuring and confirming proper integration of vRealize Orchestrator with vRealize Automation. vRealize Automation ships with an embedded vRealize Orchestrator instance, however the configuration is only at a basic level out of the box. Before we get started with configuration, let's understand the ways that vRealize Orchestrator is leveraged by vRealize Automation. vRealize Orchestrator, or VRO, is leveraged by vRealize Automation, or VRA, in two ways. The first is the Advanced Service Designer. The Advanced Service Designer allows you to create managed catalog items from any custom or out-of-the-box VRO workflow. The second is through Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS. Through integration of IAAS and VRO, you can embed custom or out-of-the-box workflows into any point of the machine provisioning lifecycle. This integration is also required if you wish to leverage NSX provisioning with your machine provisioning. Now let's look at the deployment options for VRO with VRA. If you have a simple installation with a single vRealize Automation appliance, or a distributed installation of vRealize Automation 7.0 or later, you can use either the embedded or an external VRO instance. If you have a distributed or HA installation of VRA6 that includes multiple vRealize Automation appliances, you will need to leverage an external VRO instance. First, we'll configure the VRO instance for use with Advanced Service Designer. Log in to vRealize Automation with an account that has the Tenant Administrator role. Navigate to the Administration tab, and then to the Orchestrator Configuration tab. Then click on Server Configuration tab. If you're using the embedded VRO instance, you can simply select Use the Default Orchestrator, Test the Connection, and click on Update to ensure that it's configured correctly. If you're using an external VRO instance, you will want to select Use an External Orchestrator Server. Create a name for the external VRO instance. Enter an IP or FQDN for the host name of VRO and specify the port. 8281 is the default port for VRO. Next, select Basic Authentication and enter the full username with domain and password for a user who is in the Administrators group for VRO. Test the connection to ensure that you have valid parameters. Then click on Update to save the server configuration settings. This warning lets you know that if you have endpoints configured, they will be deleted. Let's test to ensure that our configuration is truly working. Though the test we performed previously was successful, it only tested that the settings in the configuration were valid. From the Endpoints tab, Click on Add to create a new Advanced Services endpoint. Click on the plugin drop down to view the plugins in your VRO instance. If you receive a list of plugins to select from, vRealize Automation has successfully queried VRO and communication is functioning properly. At this point, you're ready to configure Advanced Services endpoints and create VRO workflow based blueprints and actions. If you do not receive a list of plugins to select from, you're encountering a configuration or communication problem between vRealize Automation Appliance and the vRealize Orchestrator server. Check the settings in the Server Configuration tab, Network Communication, Status of your VRO instance, and any firewalls that may be interrupting traffic. Now we'll integrate VRO with IAAS in order to complete our configuration. This configuration is the same regardless of if you're using the embedded or an external VRO instance. You'll want to be logged into VRA with an account that has the Infrastructure Administrator role. Navigate to the Infrastructure tab, then to Endpoints. Now click on the Endpoints tab. Create a new endpoint using the Orchestrator vCenter Orchestrator type. Create a name for the new endpoint. Enter the address for the VRO instance, including port 8281 and a forward slash VCO. 
select the Credentials button to find or create new credentials for this endpoint. Remember that these credentials must also be that of a user who has full administrator rights to VRO. If you're using the embedded VRO instance, simply use the SSO administrator account, administrator at vSphere.local. Next, we need to add a new custom property named VMware vCenter Orchestrator Priority and set it to a value of at least one to define the priority of this VRO instance. You can save time and ensure proper syntax by clicking on OK and then copying and pasting the property name from the resulting error message. Click the green check mark to save and then click OK. Let's now test our newly created VRO endpoint to ensure that it's properly configured by checking the data collection status of it. When you previously saved the endpoint, data collection would have automatically started and should complete rather quickly. From the Endpoints tab, hover over the newly created VRO endpoint and select Data Collection from the subsequent pop-up. From this page, you'll see the status of the last data collection run against this endpoint. If the status shows endpoint data collection succeeded, IAS has successfully queried the inventory from VRO and communication is functioning properly. At this point, you're ready to collect inventory from NSX as well as embed VRO workflows into the provisioning lifecycle. If the status shows failed, navigate back to infrastructure, monitoring, and log to identify why the collection has failed. Where possible, verify the newly created endpoint settings credentials being used, and again, network communication, status of your VRO instance, and any firewalls that may be interrupting traffic. Once you've resolved the connection issue, simply run the data collection again by clicking on Start and monitoring the results using the Refresh button. This concludes our look at configuring VRO integration with vRealize Automation. Subscribe to our KBTV YouTube channel and support Insider Blog to stay informed of future video tutorials. Thank you for choosing VMware.